What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today, I have a very, very special guest, uh, the doctor of whiskey, as some may call him, and he is actually a doctor of whiskey, um, Don Livermore, the master blender at Hiram Walker. Don, why don't you say hello? Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me on. It's been a long time uh, uh, getting here. I think uh, we've been chatting about this for a number of years to, to get me on your broadcast, and uh, I think finally things work out. So, uh, it took a COVID situation to, to get that to happen, but uh, hey, uh, we're here going to talk about some uh, good Canadian whiskey. Absolutely. Everybody has a little bit more time on their hands, I guess, these days, so it makes it a little, <laughs> bit, <laughs> makes it a little bit easier to, to uh, arrange for stuff like this which is nice um yeah so both of us have a very special canadian whiskey in my opinion um on our on our tables desks wherever we're sitting right now um this was in my top six whiskeys of the year last year one of my favorite canadian whiskeys of all time um oh, nice. yeah um nice. i love it i think it's fantastic stuff i think it's a masterpiece and i I really do enjoy it. Uh, 64.3 percent. This is the Wiser's 23 year old, um, predominantly corn whiskey, if I'm not mistaken, and some rye. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll uh, yeah. If you want me to say what's in it, uh, absolutely. I, if you if you want to want to go there, but uh, this is an oddity in the, in the sense that uh, when we were designing this, we under we have the understanding that audiences are looking for cast strength whiskeys and. The Canadian whiskey category is not necessarily single distilled products, right? They, they don't go through a single distillation to sit in a single cask. We, we're renownedly known as blending whiskey. I mean, this predates me. I got, uh, and behind my video screen here, I can pull out a recipe book, but I got recipe books from the 1880s showing that they're blending things together uh, and trying to smooth out whiskey or emphasize certain flavors. So when we talk cast strength whiskeys with, with Canadian whiskey, you're now talking individual components. That's not traditionally what Canadian whiskey is, right? We're, we're all about blending, putting a, the good things together. Um, so when we first launched this and we, we were just chatting off air about doing uh, odd things at whiskey festivals and stuff, and we were playing around with a Wiser's uh, portfolio and and what can we do with with uh, with Wiser's and cast strength? And it's, it's, it's why is it all about blending? It's how can we do a cast strength? So what we decided to do on this one was, you know, we took the, the rye, which is a column distilled rye and a double distilled light uh, base whiskey. That's typically the Weiser's recipe. Uh, and we stuck them together. Um, the base whiskey sits in that cast at 76%. We'll lose strength in time after 23 years, maybe down to the high 60s. Uh, and then the rye whiskey we put away at 58%. So when we kind of bring them together, it lands at the 64.3. Uh, I, I challenged my friend uh, Dave Broom when we launched this out at the uh, Canadian Whiskey uh, uh, in Victoria, Canadian Whiskey Awards a few years ago. I said, what do you call that? When you take two different blends together, or, or in, in this case, it's two, but uh, or several different blends, and you put it in together and don't add water, what do you call that? It's not your typical cast strength, right? And he was, he was at a loss, Rob. Really? Yeah, I find, I mean, I, I think that's very interesting because a lot of the like single malts will still, I guess, because they're single malts, I guess I, I, I didn't really think of it that way, but I think a lot of people are still trying to call their like the American whiskeys, but the, again, they're, they're all part it's of the map. single distillate, Rob, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those things are single distillates, whether it's a pot still or in, in terms of bourbon, it's column stills, they may have a doubler with it. But what do you call when, when you put, different types of distillations together and don't add water you call it a cast strength blend but there's no category for that right and that's and that's where i challenged dave i said well what do you call that and he, and he says i really don't know because he, he was really unaware of anybody doing that in the world and i think this is a, a new innovation a new maybe new style maybe it'll set a trend i hope so uh, so we threw out a cast strength blend and, and it, it sits at 64.3 when, when we put the two ingredients together. The other tidbit we did this, uh, when, this is last year, um, this is a 23 year old and we did it in celebration of my 23 year anniversary. So this lot of whiskey on the, in here is from the year I started, uh, started and it's pretty darn good quality <laughs> when I first started. I don't know whether I knew what, what exactly what I was doing at that time, but, uh, uh, it's certainly 
uh, uh, a little bit of that Easter egg we like to call on this one. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the um, the amount of barrel char you get out of this whiskey. It's not common, in my opinion, for a Canadian whiskey. There's a nice amount of barrel char in this. Now, there may be a reason, Rob, for that. As a blender, when I'm setting strengths of whiskey, if you want more barrel emphasis or you want more of the grain emphasis to come out, put the strength up. If okay. you want more fruity or floral characters to come to, uh, to bring the strength down, uh, okay. typically. So if I want to emphasize a certain char characteristic to a whiskey, for example, the Gooderham and Warts, we set at 44.4 because it's all about the grains, what we put in, into that whiskey, right? right. Um, so this is not charred any different uh, differently than a Weiser's brand. It's just the strength playing that nuance to you. Yeah. Well, I really enjoy it. Uh, honestly, like I think maybe that's exactly what it is because what the what I would what it reminds me of sometimes is um, the the bourbons that are like you know that heavy barrel char, right? So you're getting that nice uh, brown sugar caramel kind of note mixed in with that like maybe dark, maybe almost coffee-ish kind of like uh, burnt charred wood kind of thing, right? Um, and that's now. Yeah. Now, just for your FYI, we as blenders can play with that. I'm sure a lot of your audiences are uh, recognize that. You can go to jpwisers.ca and pick one of those up. But there are similarity compounds that come out of the grain rye that are the same in, in the barrel char. Right. So that's another thing I can play with. And I'm not I'm trying to fool the audience or fool, fool the drinker. But if I want that perception of barrel char, what you're talking about, I can bump the rye a little bit. Okay. Um, it, 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 I'm not, it's not a game. It's just just you're trying to bring in the balance uh, of what you, what you're doing. Right. Um, it, and that, that's the thing is sometimes when you see feedback for people uh, on your programs or other programs, oh, I taste this, I taste this, and I know what I put in the blends. Yeah, it's coming from the barrel or it's coming from the rye. It, it, it's tough to pinpoint some of these things because they're identical compounds, right? Right. Yeah, it's whatever it is. It's great. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm more of the uh, the, the thinking kind of guy, not not the science behind it. But I do enjoy actually learning about the science because it does further the knowledge all around. And what what you guys have been doing in general with the Northern Border Collection, with like just single releases that are pretty innovative, in my opinion. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was three years ago or so, uh, and I, I think it might have been the season oak, but I could be wrong. Was the season oak nineteen years old? Oh, I got a bottle here. Sorry to see my shirt. But <laughs> this one here, the season oak. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that, yeah, it is a nineteen year old. Yeah. There's there's a lot less rye in this one than in into the twenty three year old, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I know I bumped the ride down more to the traditional style of, of the Wiser's family, but this is an example where you think you might be getting more rye, but it's the same uh, compounds getting from the barrels that have been seasoned, right? So what we right. mean by seasoning is barrel staves were left outside and in, in the yard uh, for four years and the sun and the rain just pelt on, pelts on that wood and breaks it down. Hmm. That's your objective. If, if you're a blender, your objective is to be able to break down a barrel in whatever means possible to bring in the, the compounds that come from lignin and cellulose. Those are, that, that's really what barrels are made from. And when you bust those into the molecular compounds, those are things that drive those flavors of what we're looking for. So in the season oak, we wanted to really emphasize some of those wood spices uh, in that one. And that one is extraordinary. I love that one. I always called that one red letter on steroids, to be honest with you. Yeah, it did, it did. And Red Letter was another one that I really enjoyed, especially yeah. the original. The original I was absolutely in love with. Um, the wooden box, like just the whole presentation behind that, that was pretty cool, I thought. I can't take any credit for packaging. Uh, Louis is the guy that does that. He does a fantastic bang up job. And I think our products look beautiful, as long as the whiskey's inside of it as well. One of um, our big Canadian whiskey fans, uh, frequent viewer, uh, Peter White, he's saying that he's hey, 
And He's really enjoying the Dave Keon, the wiser Dave Keon right now. You know what, Peter? That's my favorite one out of the alumni, to be honest with you. I know you probably got a lot of Toronto. But I'm not a Toronto Maple Leaf fan whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, that I think that's probably my favorite, favorite blend uh, out of one. And I remember when Dave, and they're all different. Just so you know, if anyone is looking for the J.P. Weiser's uh, alumni, they're all different. Uh, the NHL, uh, half the profits goes to the NHL Alum Alumni Association. The other half goes to Corby. And what the association does with the profits is uh, put it to ex-NHL players that are in need. Hmm. So these guys, on their own terms, came in. I taught them Blending 101. So I, anyone in your audience who wants to learn how to blend whiskey with me once we get out of this COVID situation, Mm -hmm. uh, check it out and follow me at CDN Whiskey Doc. I announce when they come up. 100 bucks, you come and blend your own whiskey. I set up 140 different samples. Way to go. Great time. I did that with Dave Keon, and I did it with uh, all the other uh, NHL alumni. And I just remember Dave coming in. Uh, he came in off an airplane. He, he was coming in from Florida, and he had this napkin. And he, he brings this napkin. He says, oh, I like this whiskey. I want it to match a, a single malt scotch. It was his favorite as an 18-year-old. Well, I said, Dave, this is a $44 whiskey. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to match an 18 year old scotch, but we worked at it and we tried to match it. And I thought Dave came up with a pretty good solution for $44. And man, Peter, he did a bang up job uh, on that one. And uh, I can't be more proud of, of what he did and, and what the NHL Alumni Association. Yeah. Uh, that, that one, I mean, this, <laughs> Is the um, grain disclosed with those each one, or there's a couple that were 100% rye out of that series as well, right? Yeah, and I, I knew you were going to ask me that question. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that question, and it's all labeled on the bottles. Uh, see, Peter, see, see how much I like this one. It's probably my most empty alumni association one here. Uh, yes, he wore number 14, so we put a 14-year-old whiskey on that one. Uh, we had four different barrel types, yes, because he liked the the scotch, so we put space side barrels in that one. I remember that now that uh, talking with him, he had some bourbon barrels, and he really loved that woody flavor, so we put brand new virgin oak uh, in that one, and uh, some rye to certainly bring up some of the body and the spiciness I'm looking for. So it's a very complex blend. Uh, he he did a fantastic job on that. I can't say enough about that one. And like I said, that's probably my most empty empty one out of the. I don't know what that's telling you guys, but. <laughs> 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 um let's let's talk really quickly about the makeup of this so whatever you're obviously comfortable yep. um what are the components if if you can share that or like what's the level of char on the barrels maybe something of that sort so the wiser's 23 year is follows the the theme of the flagship brand wiser's deluxe right so uh, it is close to it. Uh, we did put more rye into the 23 year because we figured the drinker with that. So it's probably about double the level of what you would get into deluxe. Okay. Uh, uh, the level of rye we put into that because we, we figured this is what this audience would want, right? So it's got a column distilled rye. So our column still for rye uh, goes through uh, six, it's 65 feet tall, six feet in diameter, um, and it's full bodied. So when you column distill, you keep all your flavors that that either comes from the yeast. We could use the fruity, floral, soapy, green grass notes. Um, so that's blended in that. And then the other half of it, which is corn, has been double distilled. And when I mean by double distilled is not what you think of as a scotch, right? This this is now distilling through column stills. So you column distill it once, um, you get 70% alcohol. You column distill it twice, you get the 94 and a half. Wow. We make that from corn. Now, I, to, to mislead your audience, I'm not going to mislead you out, but I, I want you to think about this. I can make a double distilled spirit from corn, wheat, rye, or barley, Rob, and you would not be able to tell the difference. I believe it. Double distilling. Yeah, well, well, double distilling removes most of the character. It's not quite vodka, but it's pretty, pretty close to vodka, right? So that's what most Canadians like in blend. They want that light, smooth style of spirit. That's what... That's what blended scotch is referred to as grain whiskey. Right. Now in Scotland, they use wheat because wheat's the closest grain to in the cheapest grain and it gives you the most yield. Southern Ontario, where we're located, we use corn. If I was in, in the Western part of Canada, uh, you you have rye, right? Uh, it, it's cheaper or, or wheat uh, out there. So when asking percentages to a blender in Canada, you have to ask two questions, Rob. What was the grain that was used and how did you distill it? Interesting. 
right? Distilling shapes your whiskey. And I can make 100% rye for you, and everybody will geek out. I know your audience geeks out about that. Absolutely. But if I double distill it, if I double distill it and strip all the flavor out, what's the point? There was, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. So when you meet people like me or brand ambassadors and you want to be the clever person there, what was the grain you used and how did you distill it? There you go. You heard it here first. See, um, that's, I did not, I did not know that to be honest with you. Um, I didn't know that it would change the character. But you're not the only one. Though. I mean, it, it's a question. Yeah. Yeah, it's a question I continually have to answer to, to people. And, I, and I'm frustrated, but, but that's, that comes on my shoulders, Rob. Right, for sure. We as Canadian whiskey producers have done a poor, poor job on educating our customers and consumers on what Canadian whiskey is. Yeah. I always say this, Canadian whiskey is the most innovative, creative, adaptable style of whiskey there is. All we have to do is be made of grain, fermented agent distilled still in Canada, agent wooden barrel, of less than 700 liters for a minimum of three years. And a minimum of 40% alcohol, and that's it. They don't tell us how to distill it. That's up to me. Right? Distilling shapes your whiskey. Whereas on the bourbon side, they're restricted in how they distill it. That's why you ask a bourbon producer what your mash bill is. Very relevant question to them. Or in terms of the scotch side, because they're they're restricted to pot distilling it for single malt scotches. It's it's very relevant to the to them and Tom the Green. But in Canada, it's a lot of versatility, a lot of diversity, uh, and, and what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And I think you guys are kind of setting the bar that's allowing people to recognize, listen, we got to step up our game. Other companies are trying to step up their game because you guys have decided to take this in different angles, take this in and, and be really innovative in what you're putting out there. Northern Border Collection is no exception to that, right? Um, I mean, they're probably the most innovative yeah. Canadian whiskeys there have been ever, maybe, right? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think there's too. I think there's maybe a few artisanal, small distilleries that are starting to to do these funky, fun things. But you guys are kind of setting the pace for that. I think. Um, yeah, and and it's great. I mean, I, I call it our painter's palette, right? So we we get to. We get to play with those things and the Northern Border Collection and with the Gooderham and Warts and the, and the Lot 40 Cash Strike, we get to play with those and the Pike Creek, especially in the barrel finishing. It's a lot of fun to play with. I, I, I love playing. I know we're pausing this this year just because uh, things and the dynamics of the market have changed. Uh, but yeah. I, I'm hopeful for, you know, come back 2021, we can come some good stuff. I'm actually, I got my table. If I flip my camera the other way out here, my table's just full of samples looking at uh, stuff right now. Uh, uh, of what uh, things we're playing with, and and we'll see what we can come up with. So, just to confirm, we won't we won't be seeing a Northern Border collection in 2020, correct? Uh, no, we will not. So, what you'll see from us in 2020, and you should see it very soon, uh, is a Pike Creek 15 year uh, age in a Cabernet Sauvignon barrel from from the Niagara region with our sister company, Foreign Affairs. Uh, Foreign Affairs is a winery in the in the Niagara region. And it was a wonderful experience, Rob, where the winemaker just phoned me up one day and hey, can I come and do a whiskey tasting with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the company. Did a whiskey tasting and we just, you know, we're just shooting the shit. And he said, well, I didn't want to swap barrels. And yeah, so we just ended up swapping barrels. Uh, so we, he, we gave him some Pike Creek barrels. So a little bit of the base whiskey and some rye whiskey barrels. And he made a blended wine in those, those barrels. And vice versa, I, I aged a 15-year-old Pike Creek from 2004 because that was the inception of the foreign affair winery oh wow. a little bit of an easter egg there but it, yeah. yeah they started in 2004. it is a beautiful whiskey our, we just have a C, our ceo from corby just retired and he that's one of his favorite whiskeys is this one coming out and we should see it e-commerce commerce with the lcbo anytime soon uh, now but and, and hopes yeah hopefully you can pick up the bottle of wine hopefully you can pick up the bottle of whiskey and compare i, I think that'd be it's fantastic i've done that it, it excellent 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 yeah that'd be a cool experience because I'm assuming some of that um, specific wine cask is is blended into their wine that they they produce as well, right? So you might be able to pick up the nuances from both. Oh yeah, and it's great. It goes well with the brand Pike Creek. Pike Creek's all about finishing in, in types of barrels, and uh, I was really astounded at the quality uh, of it because you're always thinking, oh, sherry and port, and something really exotic, but I tell you, the flavors in this was was fantastic. 
So I am curious, like how has COVID changed the dynamics of the distillery right now? Like what, what is shut down? Are, are you guys still working at full capacity? I know that like in Scotland, they, they're considered, I guess, an essential service, but I don't think everybody's using that opportunity. So I don't, I know that some places are like firing at all cylinders and others are not. So what's happening with you guys right now? Uh, we we uh, didn't skip a beat, uh, Rob. Uh, we've been uh, fermenting. We've probably we've been distilling even more because of the hand sanitizer, right? Yeah. Uh, I know people are looking for uh, for uh, hand sanitizer. We and we were we're putting a we're partnering with the Ontario Medical Association and, and uh, giving them hand sanitizer, which was a great undertaking. A little bit nervous on mine because I'm not used to making hand sanitizer, but uh, uh, we did do that. Um, and the people that are going to work uh, are people directly related with the production of the product. So me, myself, I'll maybe go in one to two days a week. And if I, I, I live four kilometers from the distillery. So uh, I have a team that's still developing and still innovating. And I go and pick up samples at the door and I bring them home. Basically, that's how I've been operating. Uh, yeah. And uh, but I mean, we're, we're a bare bones crew and they've been doing a fantastic job holding and everybody has remained safe and, and they have really strict practices on, on what they do on it. So uh, we, we, we're, we're firing on all cylinders uh, uh, in a sense and the supporting staff, they are, they're working from home uh, to the best of their abilities. So that's kind of where, where the higher market distillery is at. Interesting. So uh, that's good to know because at least this way we won't uh, miss out on anything that could have been in i guess what 10 15 years from now or whatever i, I think a lot of people were concerned about, <laughs> uh, about well that, 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 that that's an interesting perspective because as the master blender it's, it's an interesting thought is steering the ship right is and we were again we're talking off camera here but you're talking well what do you were you tasting at certain uh whiskey festivals this year don and things like that and we've gotten into the mode now of of, of you know tasting some of our brands that have been launched and we've gotten in the mode of doing rare things that i'm working on like dr don's working on and and getting feedback and i i think it's important to keep in, innovating keep innovating and, and getting feedback is it is this what you were looking for is this what you want is age important is age not quite so important for some brands it may be is a barrel type important i mean th th this i mean one of the best skills a master blender needs to have is listening you have to listen to your consumer and, and what they're looking for uh, in their products. And uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm looking at some of the comments scrolling through here, which is great. I mean, I mean, tell me what you guys want to see. And I may be playing with it. I may not be playing with it. But if I see something enough times and going over, well, maybe there's some validity to it. And, and I think yeah. kind of the two things that are really coming to the forefront at this moment is certainly rye and cash strength. I think those are the, the the innovations that are very, very big right now in, in the Canadian whiskey. I think that has some legs. Uh, I think the barrel finishing is is peaking. I, I think people are are very curious about barrel finishing, but I'm thinking further out, Rob. What do you want five years from now, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. That's what do you a, want 10 years from now? And that that's what I got to be thinking today. Yeah, that's true. That's a great question. We kind of touched on this. Uh, I kind of touched on this with a friend uh, just discussing the decline in quality of sherry casks and we were talking about how you know rum casks are being used more frequently and, and different types of wine casks and and uh scotland just allowed for brandy casks uh different types of tequila uh, tequila so i think was theirs yeah tequila, well, exactly tequila yeah so yeah there's a there's a bunch of different things that um you could play with which i find is very interesting and i wouldn't be surprised if tequila was one of those things that is popular in a few years like tequila casks because tequila has like really i think uh, become popular within the last three four years as well so yeah i i i i've done some tequila cast for those who are asking through the feed here the tequila casks anytime i i've done that and i do my blending one-on-one the people that are really excited about that are bartenders i can see and, that. and i think yeah, and the bartenders want it as a i find as a replacement to traditional tequila made cocktails right Right. I think in that's that's what what the, the the thought is. If I go out as a just a plain old launch of a brand and a tequila finished Pike Creek or something, I, I'm not sure if that's the the territory that a Pike Creek drinker wants to go to. You know, that's what makes me a little bit nervous about that one. I'm not sure if we're ready there yet. I'm not saying that tequila five years from now. I'm not yeah. saying ten years from now. Uh, yeah. It's just today. 
I think it's very niche at the end of the bell curve, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, I think like if if you're like the tequilas that really stand out are the ones that uh, they kind of bend the rules when it comes to uh, making their tequila, which makes their tequila sweeter. They don't add like uh, added sweetness to their tequilas. They just uh, they use a process that like causes the agave to push out basically all of its sugars as opposed to the traditional ways of doing it. And those would be interesting in like looking at. Hey, I'm, uh, yeah, I talk about interest. I love interesting stuff. I mean, yeah. I really do. But yeah, you you do have to be successful in selling stuff, right? So you, you got you got to be very careful with that, right? I think honestly, I do think um, the most common thing said, and you touched on it already, is like older rise. Like a lot of people are really yeah. hoping that one day That's there's. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm sure you do it every single day, right? So a 15-year-old rye, a 16-year-old rye, a 20-year-old yep. rye, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm sure you hear, when is Wiser's or Lot 40 coming out with an older rye? And that, maybe you can I, I honestly, to be honest with you, our oldest rye, I think I have a 15, I haven't, I didn't actually go and look. I knew you were going to ask me this question. I do have a 15 or 16-year-old, I think somewhere in that neighborhood of, of a single cask, uh, but it's just not enough to launch as a, an LCBO launch, right? Right. It, it, it have to be something in a very boutique environment scenario. Or the other thing is I blend it out into something, which I think if <laughs> people are going to hear, that's a shame if you do that. Yeah. And, I, and I agree because it, it's it's very beautiful cast strength uh, uh, on its own at a 15 year. Now the thing I'll I'll, I'll caution with rye whiskey, the rye. Remember where I said how you distill it. Right. Rye in itself, and just take it from my experience on that, is you cannot pick up the taste of age until you're at least past the 10-year mark. Hmm. I can pick up age in a Wiser's product probably at the four, five-year mark uh, kind of thing, six years, seven years. I, I can tell the age differences because you were using that lighter style based whiskey in a, in a lot of that brand and same with Pike Creek, I could pick up age differences along the way, yeah. but rye is so powerful and masking. I would challenge the audience that the nuances you taste between, for example, the cash strength, uh, 11 year and the 12 year is, is in, insignificant. It just happens to be the lot. It just happens to be the batch and where we're sitting in the warehouse. So if, if we were to age declare a rye, I don't think it's prudent until you're at least past double digits, to be honest with you. And then even at that, I'm going to say it's probably plus or minus four years after that before you could tell a difference. And, and it's picking up ethyl acetate and acetaldehyde. And that's just what, you know, I go to my flavor wheel again. Uh, that's just one sliver of the pie. Right. Right. Rye is so masking that it's, it's, it's tough to pick up that age. I know it's sexy to say age as a quality cue, right. but we need to be careful. It is within a window. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, I, I would for sure the if that 15 year I talked about and the cast strength the 11 year lot you probably could tell a difference right but if 11 and 12 probably not 11 and 13 man, probably not but I, I know it's a plus or minus four year kind of that range so just be careful when we ask for age statements on Rye because yeah. there is a masking effect absolutely right. and I can totally understand and I do think that Rye is one of those things that is excellent very young like cool. it, yeah. So what rye is one of the one of these these spirits that that can be three years old and be incredible in my opinion. In, in, in a used barrel, right? Uh, I, I personally like the the third edition of the caster. I know a lot of the audience maybe likes the aged ones. I I actually like the one we put in French oak to be honest with you, because I think yeah. the French va vanilla complement of the rye spice. That's kind of my flavor profile. But hey, each to their own. Right. Um, so. Again, we will set ourselves up to having an age because we do know audiences do want it. It's just, I mean, it, it's on fire right now. So it's just a matter of planning and forecasting and that sort of thing. So be patient. Maybe we'll do a, a, a single cask drink, uh, maybe the 15 year we have at some point. Uh, yeah, money. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, Big money. That's not my department, but. Well, a lot of my, a lot of my uh, subscribers are big Scotch guys. So they're used to spending big money on stuff. So. Uh, but yeah, whiskey should be affordable and everybody should have. I, 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 I'm on the fence of that because I enjoy whiskey too. I mean, I don't like forking over something with a lot of money either.
Well, it would be cool, even if it was a single cast expression, as long as, I mean, single cast cast strength, everybody's drooling in the, in the audience right now, for sure. But I mean, I would even say single cast brought down to around 50, like somewhere in the range of 50%. Honestly, my personal, I mean, bias is that I like all my whiskey to be at least 50% or well, close to it anyway. Yeah, right? uh, the, I think that 15 year old, cause I was tasting it, oh, maybe six months ago. Uh, it's probably at 54%. So it's pretty close. I mean, we, we do put, put our rise away around 58. So, I mean, it's, it probably by the time we do, it may get down to your sweet spot, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm very curious to see what you guys will be producing in the next little while, because I, commend you on, like I said, pushing the envelope, making these other guys accountable for trying different things. And I think the biggest knock on Canadian whiskey for a long time is not trying this kind of stuff enough. Like the cash strength stuff that, you know, like, I mean, you guys, I think we're one of the first with the lot 40 cash strength to do it. I, I do not recall too many before that, that did it. Um, and no. that's, just ignorance that I don't recall it. But. There wasn't a need. I mean, there wasn't a need. I mean, I, I, I have gone back to our, our ironically, I, I went back to our oldest recipe book back in 1881. And they were selling whiskey from the strengths of alcohol from 42.7 all the way to 85.6. Wow. They were selling cash drink blends or cash. I, I can't tell exactly what it what it was, but they were selling high proof stuff even way back in the day. And I don't know who was buying it, what it was for. I have no idea, but it was on the Hiram Walker log book. So I, I think it's a trending thing and it's not unusual to the Canadian whiskey category to get, have high strength, but it, I think it just comes and goes. I mean, it, re, it really does come and go. And in, in terms of to your innovation question, I think where you were leading, leading the discussion is, well, what is Dr. Don working on? Right. I mean, I, I, I got, I got different char levels I'm playing with the rye whiskeys in, which is, very interesting and very interesting what we're doing with that. Mm -hmm. I got some Black Sea barrels, barrels from the Black Sea that I've got lot 40 in, and I got some of uh, some JP Weisers in those. Uh, I, I've got some Olorosa Sherry for lot 40 in the Weisers. I got some port barrels, uh, PX Madeira casks. Uh, I'm playing with different wood inserts, uh, which is a lot of fun. I mean, hickory. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to have that, like hickory sticks, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> I'm dating right. myself when I'm eating hickory sticks. Oh, so. okay, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maple, cherry. I mean, I, I've, been, I've been playing with that kind of thing and stuff and different inserts and the way that you burn your barrels. I mean, I mean, I, I've really been pushing the envelope on it and I encourage your audience, you know, follow me at CDN Whiskey Doc. Uh, I, I, I spill the beans a little bit on this stuff. And certainly if anyone wants to to look at uh, uh, doing a blending 101. Uh, I announced them on my uh, on my Twitter and my Instagram feed at CDN Whiskey Doc, and they sell it just like that for 100 bucks. You get to come and blend whiskey with Dr. Dunn, and uh, it's a fantastic experience. Rob, you got to come. You got to come and. I do honestly. Uh, so uh, I mentioned <laughs> him when we were off camera. Jeremy from Super Social Club. He's a good friend of mine. He has a yep. YouTube channel as well, and we were planning on coming down together and doing a competition. Who could blend the best? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who's the judge? <laughs> well, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure that out. Maybe you could be the judge. That'd be pretty cool. God, if you want my taste in whiskey, God forbid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I know you're uh, Trenny and C. I know your colleagues with Trenny and C. And and they they we had we always do an annual. When every time I'm out there with those guys, they grab six or bottles of them and they blend and they do it behind them. And they do a blend off and see who does the blend. I think they each have one. I've did it two years in a row with those guys. And it's a lot of fun. And that's the fun part about what we do. I Absolutely. mean, honestly, I, it, it's silly. It's fun. But, I mean, it, it's the conviviality about whiskey. It's that experience. It's that life moment. It's the whole package, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the whole package of sitting down with your friends and having that experiential moment. What were you doing 23 years ago, Rob? I mean, <laughs> wh whiskey's like a time capsule. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, it is fantastic. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm blessed to be in this industry. I got great colleagues that I work with that are the best in the world. I can't I can't say enough. And it takes a team effort to get to the get to this. I mean, it really does take a team effort to get to that. And I and I can't compliment them enough. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and I can see, you know, it's it's definitely a challenging industry because 
there are things that you're laying down now that but you might you might not even want to see <laughs> you might want to be out of there before you get a chance Bob, to I, had this, I had this conversation yesterday with uh one of our blenders actually uh, we were we're going through a uh, a product and everything else and we're, we're talking about some of these innovations and i said i said sure shit someone's gonna say 30 years from now what the hell was dr don thinking <laughs> and now i'm left <laughs> i'm left with this what am i supposed to do with that and but but that, that that that's the thing right you you're you're putting down your legacy i don't want to be known as that guy that left them with, with crap right. and nothing to work with and i think that's part of where i'm at that stage of my career now 24 years in but I might might have ten more years years to go. I mean, I'm at kind of that golden phase of my career, and 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 being proud to hand it off to somebody else without without a blip. To put that, and that, and that's kind of what my mode of thinking is at the moment. That's awesome. Well, um, I think that's a good place to end this. Um, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you have a an early morning uh, tomorrow. I mean, you got to head out um tomorrow morning early yeah, uh, 7, 7 a.m that's the life of a blender yeah that's when production starts so yeah yeah um i'm a teacher uh, as my day job so i i'm currently off so i <laughs> 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 but my wife's putting me to work outside i've been doing some oh uh, yes yes <laughs> uh, for sure for, and the heat come on <laughs> <laughs> you should be having a nice refreshing cocktail right about now. I know, right? It's been the hottest week of the year and my wife's, you know, pushing me to get out the door and, and do the landscaping. So. She's in the background there pushing. <laughs> <laughs> but um what I what I would like to see when you said you have about maybe ten years left in your career, I think it would be pretty awesome if I would love to do this again, you know, next year, a month from now, whenever, but I'm just saying ten years from now. When you're getting to the end and you're ready to call it quits, let's have a let's let's do this again for sure. Hopefully, I'm still doing this. Let's see, let's see if you do the thing. Oh, Rob, yeah, for sure, we can come on air. We can do it. I mean, uh, certainly, uh, it's a lot of fun, and I love. I, I'm seeing a lot of feedback. You obviously have the a nice audience here, putting in a lot of comments and and everything, and and, and this is the fun, and this, this is the fun we have. I mean, it's a great yeah. industry, and. Uh, there's lots of great people I've met along the way, and uh, it, it, it's fun. And, and and let's not take it too seriously, but it's uh, it's also fun to sit down and think about where your flavors come from and, and innovation and everything else. And and I'll, I just as we're finishing off, again, I encourage the audience, you know, uh, follow me if you want to see what the life of a blender, CDN Whiskey Doc. The other one I'll encourage you, if you're really, really into whiskey, this is a distillery cheat sheet. Um, I can point you in the right direction. It should be on jpwisers.com. Uh, and... You, and you can download it for free. They're they're free to, to look at, and they're a great resource on what you're doing. So those are probably the two takeaways uh, that are certainly so they want to say uh, uh, as we're about to exit this. So I uh, think I ah, put it on the screen. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Awesome. So uh, make sure you guys follow them. And ten years from now, we're gonna find out. You're gonna be on this channel again. You're gonna you might decide you're gonna do another ten years after that. You might not, but we're gonna find out how your innovation now played out and how bang oh, up I got some I got some good stuff and I'm, I'm really really excited I I, th I think the one thing I'm really looking forward to is I've I've done some unique things with grains in the last two to three years that uh, I think are going to be very spectacular in, in about a decade and, and I, I always and I reminisce like oh I'm retiring right when I think this stuff is going to be good but I think the point is I'm going to set the next person he or she whoever it may be uh up in a, in a good place that they'll have some great whiskeys to play with in, in about a decade it's a it's a father's dream to set up his children with something <laughs> i don't know they're my children i don't know if they have any interest in that but uh, they're too well, young to tell. Yeah. Your, your whiskey protege is you know in a, in a way your, your child right so yeah for sure uh, yeah, I see you guys. I go to the New Brunswick. I got to get to New Brunswick Whiskey Fest. Somebody's commented there. I, I, I do know I got to get out there. Um, and hopefully I can see you guys soon. It's one of the most fair festivals I haven't gone to in Canada. I got to get to the East Coast at some point. You're absolutely like Graham, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, on the line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just end the broadcast and then we can just uh, do our, our goodbyes offline. Guys, okay. thank you for joining. Uh, please follow Don on uh, Instagram. Uh, and go down to the distillery and do that master blending challenge or the blending challenge anyway, because 
eventually Jeremy and I are going to get down there and, and do a competition. We're going to try to broadcast that and, and try to make a, you know, uh, we're going to duke it out. It's going to be, <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll try that. And, uh, thanks for doing this. Don. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Rob. Thank you for having me. Cheers guys. Cheers.